I recorded this podcast recently and I want to share it with you guys on my YouTube channel. This podcast plays over at the Discount Property Investor YouTube channel, but this is such great content that I wanted to share it here too. And this episode is all about REI Black Book. They are, in my opinion, the best real estate investors CRM. They have the acquisition side of the business down with automated follow-up, drips, campaigns, you name it, contact management, but they also have dispositions down with websites, both featured and individual property, as well as the ability to text and email blast your list, not to mention the ability to capture and build a list with landing pages. So many awesome things. I interviewed Josh over at REI Black Book just a couple weeks ago. And again, I wanted to share this with you guys. So check this episode out. I hope you like it. I've been using REI Black Book for five years and counting. And without them, I, don't, I couldn't do as many deals as I do. There's no possible way. So if you're looking for a new CRM, this is the one you need to get right away. Check out the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe to help us reach a wider audience. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, please visit freewholesalecourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. We would also appreciate it if you left us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Thank you in advance for your support. And remember, you make your money when you buy and you get paid when you sell. Now let's go build some wealth. Hi guys, welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. Your host, Mike Slane, joined with my co-host here, David Dodge. David, hey guys. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, buddy. I'm doing real good. Good, good. We're, We're sitting close today. Hopefully I'm are, not too man. stinky, man. We're the same. <laughs> same. It's, uh, it was a gym day this morning, so you never know. That's right. Yeah. So today we've got uh, Josh here, right? Josh Aris. If I say your name right, that I always screwed that up. That is correct. Uh, Josh yep, yep, Aris. Josh Aris. Yep. Yeah. How, do you spell, how do you spell it? A R R A S. Yeah. So my uh, my brother in law is an Aris. I I don't know if you're related or not. How do you I'm just what, what's his name? Jim. Jim Aris. Uh huh. Spelt the same way. Uh huh. Yeah. So my Who? sister's last name is Aris now too. What's your sister's name? Liz Elizabeth. Yeah, uh, I don't think so. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I was trying to think like I don't think I have like a cousin or anything named Elizabeth. I always get the candid screenshots <laughs> yeah. for marketing purposes. Nice. Gotta love it. Well, guys, we are here today to talk about um, REI Black Book. So Mike and I just published an episode uh, yesterday or the day before on dispositions and you know what we are using REI Black Book for. Uh, for the most part, like the majority of the use that we use is for the, the dispositions. However, we are getting away from all other CRMs and moving everything we have into REI Black Book. So I'm really, really happy that we're able to get Josh to come out today. Fortunately for us, um, REI Black Book stationed and they're located, yeah, their headquarters. Right down the highway. Is right here in St. Louis. So it's yep. really, really awesome to be able to get one of their guys in. And Josh is a friend. I've known Josh for, shit, probably three and a half years, yeah, give or take, least, from yeah. coming to some of the events that you guys have. So either way, I'm really happy that you're here. Thanks for coming. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Absolutely. And I really just wanted to kind of have some conversations with you today about some of the other features that we aren't really using that much, but we're going to start. But I want to not only have you educate Mike and I on these, yeah. but obviously all of our all of our audience as well, too. Yeah, so kind of in a nutshell, what REI Black Book is, and, and we've made a ton of improvements over the last probably two or three years. Uh, we completely rebuilt the CRM from the ground up. And um, for those of you that don't know what a CRM is, um, sometimes I, t I take this stuff for granted because I talk about it every day. But a CRM stands for Contact or Client Relationship Management. And so it's literally where you're going to manage the relationship with all of your, your prospects and your leads. Um, so we've got a CRM built in, and that's really the, the core functionality of REI Black Book. And then we've built a lot of the tools that investors need to run their business around that CRM. So things like websites, landing pages, trackable phone numbers, 
um, two-way, you know, th- on those phone numbers, you can text message as well. Um, we've got property management and marketing, which I know you guys are using you it for. You guys have a lot. lot of things in there. there there's, it's cool. There's a lot of stuff in there, and so it's tough to uh, it's tough to explain it. You know, it's tough. People are like, give me the elevator pitch. Um, the easiest way to say it is is it's all the tools you need to run your real estate investing and business in one place. That's such a good point, though, because it is. It is all the tools. You yeah. don't need to go out and find five, six, seven, eight softwares. Yeah. You can go with that one. Yep, exactly. And and you can, you know, a lot of people will ask, okay, well, do you guys have like a dialer like Mojo? It's like, well, okay, there are some things we don't do. But there's still ways to integrate, you know, your leads from a system like Mojo into REI Blackbook. Or, you know, a lot of times you'll have your list of what we call prospects. So in our mind, you have prospects and you have leads. And then, of course, you have you know leads that turn into contracts and deals. Mm-hmm. But a prospect list would be like a list that you buy from you know list source or something like that, or, or you get it from the courthouse. And then you go skip trace it, and now you've got you know 2,000 names that you can cold call. You wouldn't want to necessarily upload all of those into your CRM. You're saying that's prospects. Yeah. Because so they're, yeah, yes. they're not qualified. Really. Correct. So okay. those would just be prospects. It's just a bunch of names on a list. They haven't You haven't contacted them. You don't know if they're motivated, if they're not motivated. So if you uploaded all of those into your, your CRM and you did that every month, next thing you know, you'd have 20, 30, 40,000 oh, hundreds prospects of thousands. in there. Yeah. Right. You turn around a couple of years later Crazy and amount. you would just, you'd have a, a total log jam in, in your system. So, you know, the point where a prospect becomes a lead is typically when that contact record is entered into ARIA black book. And so that can happen automatically. Um, in the form of somebody calling one of your phone numbers. So in REI Black Book, our phone system's called Profit Dial. Man, so I gotta stop you right there. And this is one of the main reasons, Mike, that we are moving over because right now we have to manually input those when the calls come in. Mm-hmm. With via our virtual assistant. Me and you aren't doing it, obviously. We have people that we've put in place to do those, but yep. boom, awesome. Yeah. So Very you cool. could. Yeah. So uh, same thing with postcards. Let's say, right? So you have a list of prospects, five thousand names on a list, and now you're sending postcards out to people. And so you put your profit dial phone numbers on your postcards, and you can have multiple numbers. So depending on what plan you're on, you can have you know ten or twenty numbers. Mm-hmm. I mean, some people have sixty, seventy, eighty phone numbers um, inside of REI Blackbook because they have a bunch of different places where they're marketing. And so now you can track all of your marketing. So no matter where you're marketing, whether it be billboards, I know you guys were doing radio ads for a while. We are again now too. Awesome. You got yeah, them back and on it sounds again. like they were working pretty well. Yeah, they were doing real good. And so regardless if you're using, you know, billboards, bandit signs, radio ads, postcards, Google pay-per-click, Facebook ads, doesn't matter. You can have a unique phone number for each one of those ads and they all go to the same place. And so all of those leads kind of have that same experience. So when they call in, they're still talking to the same person or they're going to your call answering service or however you guys are managing your inbound leads. But on the back end, they're being, you know, a source is being applied and a tag is being applied. So now you could go back and look, hey, 30 days back, 60 days back, you know, take a snapshot from like the last quarter and you can say, where did all of our leads come from? What was our best lead source? Because then you can look at if you, everything's in one place, you can say, hey, this quarter we closed, you know, 14 deals. Where did those 14 deals come from? And it's easy to identify it because the first time they contacted you, they're automatically tagged and sourced. So you I don't have to it. think about it. Um, and so then you can, it's easy to run reports. And you can, you can call these people back. If, like let's say they call in and, and you don't answer. Can you choose the caller ID in which you want to call back yeah. from? Yeah. Oh, so, cool. so the system will default to the phone number that they, that they sent. called into. That or, way if or they save it, it for whatever reason or yeah. they just know it, yep. you know, if it's like a recognizable number. And like really, um, uh, why, why, why that's important is if you call back in three to ten minutes, right? Yeah. But if it was a you know a day or two later, they may not remember. But if they just dialed it, and they see it come back, they're going to be like, oh great, you know, versus it being another one. So that's yep. really really cool too. Yeah, like and that. so another thing too is you we've got uh, something called call flows and workflows. And so when a lead when a call comes in, let's say you can't answer it, um, and this is getting in the weeds a little bit, but um, this stuff's kind of fun to talk about because it's, yeah. it's really powerful. So when somebody calls in and you aren't able to answer, there's something in the system called answer branching. And so it says, if you answer, do this. If you don't answer, do, do this. That. So then okay. you could you know, you know, could send them a text message right away and just say, hey, sorry, uh, we weren't able to answer your call. When's a good time to chat? And so now you're kind of picking up some of those leads that you might lose. Yeah, because you got you got to get back. For one, guys, if you are new to this game, you have to answer your phone. 
Do everything in your power to answer your phone. And if that means that you are too busy to do it, then you need to hire somebody to do it. The other Number thing I like about that, though, is it's much more real life. So, like, Dave, when I call you, if you're busy, yeah. well, we're oh, on I iPhone. just did we're it on two iPhones. seconds ago. Yeah, you literally just click a button and says, sorry, I'm on the phone, I'll call you back. Yeah. In a meeting right now, I'll call you back. Yeah, like, that's awesome. We're constantly doing that to each other, so it's just nice to be able to do that to... <laughs> Real time. Yeah, to, to people who are calling you. Real Again, time. they experience something that's more like, oh, well, they got a busy signal, or, oh, I'm driving, I can't answer. I know yeah. some of your parents Real turn... Real time, right? Yeah, see, I know some of your parents yep. turn on the But it uh, makes you... The driving It feature, makes right? you look like a real like a real person and not just some automated system or big business, but also it gets that follow-up started immediately. Yeah. So they're not going off and dialing three to five other companies. It's like, oh, they sent me a text. They don't know it's a system. They think it's a person, most likely. Yeah, right? and you can choose what you say. You can that, right? you so, say. You, so you can make it super personal. Uh, at this point, you probably don't have their name, but if they came in from a web form, um, you could merge hey, and make I their name. Hey, I saw you just called. Yeah. I'm walking through a property with a... Yeah, I'm on an appointment, or can I call you back in a in a few? Yep. You don't even have to, to yep. specify how far a few is. Yep. But again, it may it may prevent them from seeking. Yeah, that service and then you elsewhere. get an immediate alert that you have a call and that and that you need to follow up, or you can route those notifications to somebody to on whoever your team you want or a virtual team. assistant or something like that. Very so, cool. the whole purpose of of this is, and this is system agnostic. Like it's really cool. You can do all the stuff in RIA Blackbook, but having systems in place to pick up all of the, um, you know, the leads that traditionally fall through the cracks is one of the best investments you can make in your business because, um, you know, I just did a training yesterday and the title of it was it was how to close more deals without spending more it's money. Essentially, you can cut in half the cost yeah. per lead if yeah. you have a good system to follow up on all of them and you're not dropping the ball. Yeah, because absolutely. You know, let's just Huge. say, for example, you're generating a hundred leads a month, and out of those hundred leads, you close, I don't know, four deals, whatever, whatever the number sure. is, right? Yeah. So that means there's 96 leads that you paid for, right? Right. Probably good money, um, and they express some sort of an interest, and in, you know, they wouldn't have taken the time out of their day. There's a million other things you could do throughout the day than respond to a piece of direct mail or click an ad on. So the a ones Facebook that do stream. have a lot of value. Yeah. There's yeah. there's some form of of um, there's some form of uh, motivation there or intent, I should intent. say. There's yep. some form of intent there. And it may not be great enough that you're going to be able to buy their house right away. But that's why, you know, you could have these long-term drip campaigns. So then, like, let's say there's like, nope, they, ref they, they either completely ghost you, they go cold on you, and they don't pick up the phone when you call and you've tried three or four times. At that point, most investors would say, hey, this is a dead lead. They just kind of move on. Why not put all of those people in a follow-up campaign that's just going to follow up with them every few weeks uh, via text message, email, ringless voicemail? And if all of a sudden, three months from now, you've got 50, 60, 70 people in a campaign like that, every month, a couple of those are going to pop out, and those are going to turn into deals. And who knows? In this business, sometimes a deal's worth $5,000, but sometimes a deal's worth fifty. Sometimes it's worth 100 Right. Yeah, you guys <laughs> just did a big deal. We just deal. did yeah. a big one. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you never know what you're going to get, and you've already paid for that lead. So why not take, you know, an afternoon or maybe a weekend to learn how to use a system like this to yeah. implement a system like A little bit like of upfront time, yeah. but then you don't have to ever deal with it. It's yeah. so great. Yeah, and, and the cost of systems like this is, is minimal in comparison to what it can do for your business, right? So, you know, sometimes it's 100 bucks, 200 bucks a month. Um, a lot of investors I know that aren't using um, REI Blackbook, they've got, you know, three, four, five, six systems that they're kind of – duct taping together um oh and they're spending Josh, six seven eight hundred dollars a month we still on systems. have six seven systems yeah right and we're in the process of reducing all that as well yeah. mike's been a user for like five and a half years i've been using it for probably four and a half years maybe a little more but yeah, something like that a long yeah, time. time i mean collectively over five, over yeah. five years and right now you guys are just using it for disposition and it's still valuable enough that you're continuing to for use the it, most part though, we're, we're transitioning yeah, yeah. now but for, yes correct yeah mm -hmm. but and, and that's another thing, too, is is with REI Blackbook specifically. I just wanted to touch on why, though. So why? Because when we started using REI Blackbook, it didn't have as much as it has now. Yeah. So that, you, that, earlier yep, you had yep. touched on the fact that, like, oh, that's a good point. it's built out a lot of stuff. And mm -hmm. it's because we, yeah, we had, we pieced stuff together because yep. REI Blackbook wasn't as robust as it is now. So now we can move back to that's a good point. Yeah. Just that's exactly why. That's not one system. It's not an yep. excuse. Yeah, it's not. That's well, a fact. Well, and again, it's yeah. like, hey, we. 
we went out and purchased this and you guys said, hey, it's coming, it's coming. Well, at the, at the speed of business, we were like, well, we're going to do it now. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys had yeah. But it's okay because they did it right versus yeah. just rushing it. Yeah, and they've, so. got every, and they've got everything we're looking yep. for now, which is awesome. So I'm sorry, I just wanted to kind of no, yeah. Yeah, yeah, clarify why we wouldn't use Aria Blackbook for everything to begin with. Yep. So. yep. No, absolutely. Abs- yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's – so every quarter we'll roll new features out, right? And so um, – Last year was a big push of finishing the new CRM. So we completely rebuilt the CRM from the ground up. The old CRM was built on, you know, kind of old technology. We couldn't improve it anymore, and it was just kind of becoming cumbersome to use, frankly, with all the new stuff that we were building around it. So that took, you know, probably it, – it's kind of it's kind of funny. It's like rehabbing a house. It always takes twice as long and, and twice well, we'll as much. we'll have it done as, in six weeks. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> five and a half months later. Right. Oh, I get yeah. it. Well, and the CRM is basically like you guys were ripping out the foundation of a house. Yep. Too. Yeah. So and everything's going to be held everything up functioning. and then kind of get it all to connect again. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. half of 2018 and, and kind of into the first half of 2019 was very it was a very interesting time because we had half of our users run the old CRM. Oh, no. Half of our users run the new one. And so people would write into support. Really? And it's just like, Shoot. all right, so are you on the... The client genie, or are you on the new CRM? Mm, yeah, and yeah. So it was it was interesting, but now everybody's transitioned over, um, and you know, really now the foundation is is that new CRM, and then what we call workflows and call flows, like I was talking about. So you can build out basically all of these automated processes that are like the critical processes that you probably repeat in your business every day. It's what happens when people call in and you're not able to answer, or you do answer. What happens when somebody accepts your offer? What happens if somebody rejects your offer, right? And so you've got all these contingency points and all these all these potential breaking points in the sales cycle of a you know real estate investor's business. And so let's just say you're going and you're doing whatever kind of marketing, and you're driving them to a phone call. That's that first kind of in a uh, you know in a process map. It'd be a decision diamond. It's like did you answer the call or did you contact the lead or did you not? Okay, if you did, great then we need to analyze that deal and we need to make an offer. But that obviously doesn't happen every time, right? right. So if you didn't, then what happens? Well, then you could have a workflow um, that would basically follow up with these people once a day for 10 days via text message, ringless voicemail, email. And then after that 10 days, did that did that follow-up campaign get them back over, you know, into that... Into that um, line of communication. Yeah, into that line of communication or mm-hmm. did it not? If it did, then great. Then you're going back down and you're saying, hey, we're going to analyze the deal. We're going to make an offer. But if it didn't, then you can automatically trigger a long-term drip campaign. And all of this, you know, once you set it up, you know, it, it's basically just running in the background at all times. Um, and so you could just be fo- – those leads will be followed up with, you know, every few weeks, you know, into perpetuity forever, mm-hmm. right? And so you can set it up where it will just be like a 12-week follow-up campaign that just goes on a loop. Right. And oh, so, that's cool. And so it just goes on a loop. Just and it'll over just, at the end. And basically, you're going to follow up with them until they call you and want to talk business. They call you and tell you to go jump in a lake or they unsubscribe. Right. And either way, all you're trying to do, the whole purpose of follow up is just to re engage conversation. Right. Right. You're not going to buy or sell a house from a text message, but you will get somebody on the phone. Yeah. They'll call they you might... back and be like, hey, I've been busy. I'm yeah. sorry that I haven't answered the last 18 phone calls. Because I was busy, but guess what? Now I'm ready. Challenge yeah. that's okay. accepted. Right. Let's buy a house without <laughs> talking to somebody. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Hey, man, if you can do that, I would, I would I, love I, to I, hear I, it. I, I like was it. just trying wheel spinning. I don't think we've done it without actually like talking it. to somebody. But if you guys do, let's, let uh, me know, and I would love to feature you as a case study. Yeah, that would be All pretty right. good. <laughs> text like message it. purchase. Let's do it. That is All right, awesome. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Very um, cool. But, yeah, you know, so we, we have uh, – in our in our Facebook community, we have a, a private Facebook community for all of our users, um, and so every once in a while, you'll see people post screenshots of their of their text conversations that they're having with sellers, and sometimes you know they're funny, and sellers will you know tell you to go f off and do sure. whatever. But um, but every once in a while, somebody will post a screenshot of a seller that's thanking them for following up. And yeah. saying, hey, oh, yeah. hey, hey, yes, I want to sell my house. Sorry, life has just been crazy. I can't believe how much you followed up with me. You know, it, it'll be it'll be weeks, if not months, down the road, and then somebody finally replies, right? Yeah, Josh, it does, our average deal, what is, what is it, Mike? Six, eight months, something like that. Yeah, yeah I'd say probably closer to five, six months. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, average deal. Do we get deals that we can go get a contract on the same day they, they call us? Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, but the average time that they hit our CRM to the time that we get a contract on it 
is usually five, six, maybe seven months. Yeah. I mean, it takes time. And it's cool. It's all about the follow-up. Yeah, and it's cool that you guys know that because then you can look at a lead and say, hey, this actually isn't a bad lead. They're just not ready right now. And we just decided a while ago, like maybe three years ago, or at least I did. I think Mike's probably mm-hmm. on the same page. But let's quit chasing leads because when we do that, they end up being bad leads or they end, we ended up over-promising. Yeah. So, like, when we make an offer, we stick to that offer. Now, we did an episode on this yesterday or the day before. Um, about determining our MAO. So we're, we're never making offers at MAO, yep. which is our maximum allowable yep. offer. We're making below that. But we in our system, we say, here's where we can go up to. And if they're way out of line, don't go up to that right away. Stay at our number. So then later when they start coming down, then we have some room to come up to meet them in the middle. So that's not even... But our, but our middle is like really 20 of us coming right. up and 80 them coming down. I mean, that's, that's how we define middle. I didn't even think that's what you were going to talk about. I thought you were going to talk about that we decided about three or four years ago that leads in our system are not dead until basically what you, that too. Josh just said, yeah. Yeah. until they tell us to go jump in a lake. Yeah. yeah. Like we literally, it doesn't matter if we go on an appointment, it's still a lead. If yep. it, I mean, in our mind, it's still a lead that we're working forever yeah. until we buy the house, they sell it, or they tell us to jump yeah. in a lake. Jump in a lake, Like we yeah. literally keep following up. Well, when I first started wholesaling though, that was, I think, one of the main mind shifts that I had that, that allowed me to go from one or two deals a month to like many, many more is because I just said, all right, instead of trying to convert every single lead that comes in, let's just focus on more. Yeah. Just focus on more leads. If it takes six, eight months to be able to start to get that that follow up to be able to start producing three, four, yeah. five deals a month, then that's fine. But let's quit chasing. But also with yeah, but, that, and though, once the scales tip and you get to that six to eight month boom. mark, then you've got you, know, you the, do a month where you do then, 10 then, deals. Then you've got the last six to eight months, and every month there's there's those people and that you've it. already been following up with for, right. for six, seven, eight months. And so it, it's you know it's probably not the most exciting thing to hear if you're just getting started that, yeah, you could start marketing today and close a deal in six months. But that <laughs> that's how you build a bit an actual business, right? right? And so a lot of, I think, wholesalers, when they're getting started out, are kind of like professional salespeople. And so they're just trying to go out and close deals, mm-hmm. right? Which is which is great because it's like, yeah, you want to make money today. Right. And you could probably do a deal or two or three a month that way mm-hmm. and be fine. But those leads that are going to close fast are typically really expensive if you want to generate them on a regular basis. So true. Or you get super lucky. Yeah, right? they're your referral home yeah. run or so, they're like a $250 AdWord click. Yeah, and I so mean, it's, it, it's one of the two. And so it's it's right. tough to build a business, a, a, a consistent business and a predictable one off of lucky leads. Mm-hmm. And it's really expensive to run one off of hot leads, right? Mm-hmm. If all you're trying to do is, is follow up with hot leads. And so like most of your time and attention should be spent focusing on talking to hot leads. But it's going to take sometimes, like you guys said, six to eight months for some of those leads to warm up to the point where you – they are a hot lead. You know and if what? You're else? the one following up. I love it. They're probably going to call you and not somebody who just sent them a postcard three days ago. Yeah, you nailed it. Another thing that uh, one of my mentors, Joe McCall, always says is, "Show me an expert at their CRM, and I'll show you a broke investor." <laughs> Which is so smart, though. So I mean, it makes sense. So it's like you know, put the systems in place, and then let the systems do the job. Yep. Your job, and you said it a second ago. Is you you're, you know you're going to be the most productive out in the field, running leads, talking to sellers, not sitting around entering data. Yeah. So put systems in place that will automate that for you. I yeah, love and that. you know depending on where you're at, depending on how much how much um, you know money you have to get the business going. I mean, sometimes it's just best to hire somebody to put some of this stuff in place for you. Like Aria Blackbook is user friendly enough where you could go in, watch videos. Um, we do weekly webinars. We've got tons of training, and you could set it all up yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but not everybody wants to nerd out on a CRM. Like that, we have people that you could go to, and you pay them a few thousand bucks, tell them what you want, and they'll set it up Just for build you. the whole thing out for you, right? right? So it's like anything else. It's time or money. So mm-hmm. you could sit there and, and figure it out in a couple weekends, or stay up late a few nights, and you could probably figure it out, or write a check and tell somebody what you want, and they'll build it for you. It's either time or money. We played time the time or money, money game yesterday, didn't we? We did. We, <laughs> well, we frequently talk about that. Yeah, no, you're it's absolutely right. the difference right. between, yeah, it's time or money. And your mm-hmm. leads, are you going to pay for it or are you going to work for it? Yeah. One or the other. Mm-hmm. So. Let's talk about the, uh, the, the route that the typical person takes when they're starting. And I would think it's going to probably all be pretty similar, right? So when I first started... Um, I had nothing. I had no business. I had no no marketing. I didn't even have any money. 
Yep. And you know, you typically start out and you're like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. And you go out and you get a, you get a business card or you, you, you get an entity yeah. with your name, but then you need phone numbers then you need a website. Then you need an email address. Yeah. You, I mean, that's like the first three things that I would suggest everybody do. Like get a business, an entity, an LLC. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars with a lawyer. You can go file one yourself with the Secretary of State's office yep. for like 30, 50, 70 bucks. I mean, it's cheap, right? But then you're going to need a website, an email, and a phone number. When I first started out, I used Google for my email. I went and got some third party phone number, and then I got another third party company for my website. Yep. If you are new, don't do that. <laughs> okay? Because then you're managing all these things. Now, that's just a couple that I mentioned. Yeah. Right? And then let's say let's say next you're like okay I got I got my website I got my my name I got my phone number I got my email now I need to go get business cards and then next I need to to set up um, a server to send out mass emails you know for marketing messages and then I got to go get another product to um, you know to keep track of my leads which is the CRM that we yep. just talked about next i need to i need to have another website or a page on my website to sell those deals yep. and then i need a system to capture emails which may be the email server it may not mm -hmm. but before you know it you have a handful i'm talking like a dozen services unless you just have all the time in the world to manage all this stuff on a pad of paper or a spreadsheet i didn't right. and most people don't so that's what i love about your guys' system and and in the beginning we weren't using all those things but yeah, now we are shifting over. So let's just talk about some of the features that you guys have because yeah. it's truly the only all-in-one system that I'm aware of that has all this stuff in it. Yeah. Awesome. So to get started, I mean, we have what we call a jumpstart course. So if you were to go by REI Blackbook today, um, you'd get a few emails from us over the course of you know three or four days, and we would encourage you to set up um, your website, your business phone number. That's just the very the easiest way to do it is you set up a phone number in in, in Profit Dial um, that just forwards to your cell phone. Right, and that, that's the easiest way to get started. Um, so website, phone but number. I, I want to interrupt for one second, Josh. I'm apologize for that. No, you're good. But that is so important if you don't do that from the beginning. And here's why. I didn't do that in the beginning. I waited like a year and a half to do that. Yeah. And then when I wanted to separate my personal cell phone from my business, it took me another year to separate it. Do it day one. Get yeah. a business phone number, guys. Don't put your cell phone number on your business cards. It's not worth it. You're talking a few dollars a month to get a phone number or it's included with the REI Black Book. I mean, it's just it's a no-brainer because you don't want to be at dinner with your spouse or out at, you know, on the weekends with friends or at church. I mean, it could be anything, right? And then your phone's blowing up for the business. Have the ability to turn that on and off. Yeah, and another thing, too, the, the, to give a point, because when you have your cell phone, you can't forward your personal cell phone anywhere. No. I mean, I guess you probably can, but then all of your calls but it's are all or none. There. Yeah. So with a profit dial phone number, you could forward it today to your cell phone because or you're— Or from six, be, nine to six yeah, cause or you're a, whatever. Yeah, because you're a company of one, so like right now maybe you're, you, you have to do everything. Right. But let's say you close a deal and you're like, all right, you know, like we talked about at the very beginning of this, this, this show— the importance of, of being able to either answer the phone live or if a lead's coming in from a website, you got to be able to contact them in like the first five minutes, right? Um, and so if you're doing everything that's really tough and, and if you then have to go from using your personal phone number to now you're going to get a business phone number, like you said, it took you a while oh, to man, kind of wean your business. It took me a whole year to wean off yeah. of it, and that's after I changed it. Yeah. But it's because I had it for a year and a half. Yeah, so all so, you I have mean, to I'm do— I'm to the point now where it's like, Check this out. And I, I don't mean to take over the conversation. No, go for it. But if I get a call from a motivated seller at this point, I know it's from a postcard I sent three years ago. Yeah. That they kept. Oh, yeah. So it's like, it's actually kind of fun. It's like, did you get a postcard from me three or four years ago? Yep. Sure. Yeah. Because nothing else can would yeah. make sense for that to happen yeah. now. But whenever that happens, I know. I'm like right away. I'm like, hey, that's cool. Because it also encourages me to send more mail because I know that it doesn't all get thrown away. Yep. 99% of it does, but not all of not it. Not all so of go it. So yeah. go ahead. Didn't Absolutely. Mean to interrupt. But yeah, so if, if you know tomorrow you decide, hey, I don't want to field calls anymore, I'm going to go get a call answering service, or I've get, now got an acquisition manager, I've got an inside sales rep, all you have to do is go in and change where that number forwards to. Right. And that's it. And it, that takes you know oh, less than a minute. Yeah, I mean, that, 25 that's seconds. super simple to do. Um, and so when you build these systems, and you as the business owner need to, de need to define what the systems are and build those out, it's then easier to 
to step back from a specific business function and plug somebody else in because the system's already built. So this is, you know, E-Myth. Like, you guys read E-Myth? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. So right so, person, right seat. Yeah. You can't so do all, you can do it all from the beginning, but you need to start filling the gaps. Yeah. yeah. And so like you, you slowly start to remove yourself from the business and plug people in. And so um, it's hard to do if everything's just in your head. Right. Or especially if everything's going to yourself. Right. Um, and so to, to answer your initial question, talking about features. So it's web. We have websites, websites. Um, and you can have kind of like an umbrella website that we call an authority site. That's kind of an all in one. I typically recommend going the route kind of that you guys have where you've got a website for sellers so you know that you're directing all of your your motivated seller traffic to and that website just speaks directly to their needs. I highly recommend you separate them. Yeah. Highly recommend it. Yeah. It's never really happened to me cuz it's always been separated, but I've heard horror stories of people getting their getting properties under contract putting and whenever they have one site for yep. both. And then people and then are the, the that same they're... people will go and see it. Yeah. You know, for whatever reason, they're like maybe they want to go do some research on this company that they're under contract with, and yep. then they see their own property listed for ten grand more than what you're willing to pay. It trust me, it's going to piss people off. Yeah, so separate them. Yeah, and I mean that that is a, a great point. And that, I wasn't even going there, but that's a that's a really good point. Um, and so you can have multiple websites. You could have one for your sellers, and you could have one for your cash buyers. And so mm-hmm. then people can go to that cash buyer site, and now if they're interested in a property, they can you know they can either inquire on that property, and they're automatically going to be added to your cash buyers list, which that then is, goes into your love CRM. That part. Yep. Or maybe they don't see any property, you don't have any inventory, but you can still build your cash buyers list. And you can say, hey, if you'd like to get access to... We didn't even mention this in the episode we did about dispositions. No, we didn't. We forgot all about that. What's that? We? Building your buyers Building list? Building our buyers yeah. list. I mean, that's like the coolest part of of the of it. Yeah, and you Forgot can and you that. can segment. Uh, you can build it out in a way where you ask them specific questions, and based on the way they answer the questions. So, like here in St. Louis, you might say, uh, when they go to join your buyers list, it's like, hey, so we can make sure that you just that you only see properties that are relevant to you. Um, where are you interested in buying? North County, yeah, rehabs, South County, West rentals, County, yeah, West, East, and so literally under hundred k, lower. Yep. 100, I mean, it could be anything you want, guys. Yeah. Anything so we just want. call that a buyer profile. So we ask people, we ask them to fill out a buyer profile. And every box they check, um, once they submit it, that's going to be a tag that will be applied to their contact record. And then you can go search when now you have a property in North County. You can just send it to all of the people that expressed interest in North County and not blast your entire list. Yeah, which is a great way to lose people on the list if you're giving them content, deals, emails, whatever, that they're not wanting. I love how much REI Black Book has evolved. Because a lot of this stuff was like, Hey guys, how do I do this? I'm like, well, I don't really know how it's to do coming, that. It's coming, yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I'll figure it well, out. Well, here's the thing: did something kind of bandaid Mike, it on the back, and, and it now it's best. Now you it's all did. there. When we were doing our podcast last week, you were like, man, it's like our best kept secret, mm-hmm. but we haven't really promoted it all that much because the things that we wanted it to do didn't really do that for us when we joined. But they've now been, they do. But yeah. they and they've been doing it for like three years. And it's because of and guys, we're, and we're late to the party, yeah. moving all of everything. And over. it's because of guys like you that that come in and say, "Hey, does it do this?" And we're like, "No." And but so, it, but we add it to our dev board, right. and then we, you know, every quarter we have a leadership meeting, and we sit down and say, "Hey, you know, what f- new features are we going to work on this What's quarter?" What's in demand right and now? And I mean, the list is a mile long oh, and, sure. and it's always yeah, growing right yeah. like i wish we could hire 10 more it's developers like laundry, but, though. it'll never be done right always no, gonna be yeah stuff i mean it's there. but but that's the cool thing is we're always adding to it and we are you know we're a 100 percent software development company so we like i don't sit in in flip houses every day right sure. i um you know i work with aria black book as a i'm not a software developer i run the marketing team but um, you know, we talk to real estate investors every day and work hand in hand with, with guys like you to say, Hey, what are you guys, what do you guys need? You know, and then we can go back and we can build it. Um, and then we work on, you know, content and workshops to help people, you know, use the platform better. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, um, so we're always, I mean, we're always just building new stuff. As a matter of fact, we have right now, we're working on a mobile app finally. Um, and so profit dial will have a mobile app. And so you'll be able to access all of your contacts that are inside of your CRM. When people call you, it'll be it'll act more like you use Google Voice. Mm-hmm. So it'll be more like Google Voice, where it'll actually show up as a phone call. You know, you'll know it's from the app coming from the app yep. coming from the app. When somebody texts in, you know, it'll be more like Facebook Messenger, where you can actually just reply to text in real time. You'll get a push notification. Um, so that's in development right now. 
I'm not going to ha- say any release date because sure. I don't want you to <laughs> yeah. hold me to it. Because like I we, said, we it, know how it goes. Yeah. In development. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we, we're hoping it comes out on this day, but then all of a sudden there's, you know, there's bugs and things, but, uh, but we're super excited about that. People have been asking for an app for a long time. Um, and so that's, it, it's gotta be hard to, to make an app and a website talk to each other. Right? It's not the easiest. It's like totally yeah. different languages. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's not the easiest thing to do. Um, we've done, we've done a good job of making the platform as mobile friendly as we can. And so mm-hmm. you could pull it up on a web browser and you can, you can use it, but there's just certain things like push notifications, you know, when you get a text message and again, like speed to lead is so important. Speed to if lead. somebody texts you in real life, unless you're sitting in a meeting or something, you're probably going to reply to them if, if it's important to you. I love that. Right. And so speed to lead is, is super important. And you know, you don't want to see a text three days later and, and then reply all of a sudden. Cause that, that's not normal. Like you usually don't reply to text messages three days after you get them. I do to some people, you know, I kind of take my time. Yeah. But, well, uh, I know, mean, not well, if somebody's trying to sell you their house. Yeah, not if they're trying to sell you their house. <laughs> right. Was, no, you're right. It's, it's usually yeah. 10 minutes, 20 minutes later at the latest you're yeah. going to reply to somebody. So, yeah. And so it, it's kind of interesting, like consumers nowadays, and you know, I say consumers in a, in a g- g- uh, general term, um, in this example, it'd be sellers, right? But consumers are more and more willing to like have conversations now over email and over text message, over Facebook Messenger than they ever have been. And so um, it's kind of cool. Like we'll send out text blasts to our um, our database like when we have a uh, boot camp, like when we're throwing a boot camp and like ticket prices are about to go up. So we'll just send a text blast to our database, uh, all of our users, and say, hey, ticket prices are going up in two days. If you have any questions, just let us know. And you could send it out to a few thousand people, and you could just sit there and have conversations with people via text message for hours. Oh, and, my, and these are my just preferred sales. method of conversation is yeah. text messages. And these are just uh, – most people's is, right? Like yeah. Most, people's com- most people would prefer to text people. In any other way. Yeah. I mean, I very rarely will call somebody unless it's like, you know – trying to like figure out plans or something right yep, yep if it's just like hey i'm gonna go have coffee with a friend or something like that i'm gonna text him and say hey you want to meet me at this coffee shop at 10 if a friend of mine called me and was like you want to get coffee i'd be like why did you not text me yeah, bro just text me man <laughs> i'd be like no because you called me I'm exactly just kidding. but yeah but <laughs> i thought you were injured or you yeah help. yeah exactly yeah. i thought this was an emergency <laughs> yeah yeah so uh so you can do two-way texting inside of rei black book um and all and the cool thing is the entire um, conversation is logged. And so that's, again, the, the power of having it in one platform is your calls are all logged and recorded. So we have call recording built in. Right now it's included. So call recording is free. Um, all of your calls are logged and recorded. All of your text messages show up in that communication stream. All of your um, all of the emails that they've received from you that are like, you know, automated emails that come out of a workflow. Yeah. Um, we don't have an integration with like Gmail or Outlook yet, but again, it's on yeah, the Yeah, but you can board. just log that manually though if you're yeah. doing it outside the system. And really at that point, those those communications should be minimal because the whole point of all this automation is to get them on the phone. Yeah, exactly. So if they, you know, if they, if you're emailing them outside of it and they call, so what? You don't even have to necessarily record that. Just yep. record that you got them on the phone, and then what happened next? That's yeah. the that's the that's the meat and potatoes right there. That's yep. what matters. And if and if you're making your outbound dials from a profit dial number, then all those outbound calls be can be recorded as well. And so the reason that that's important is because is, is twofold. So number one, um, if somebody calls you and you're out in the field or something or you're driving, um, you don't have to worry about stopping and trying to take notes. You can actually just engage in a good conversation. And you could go back and, and you listen can, to and it, listen or, to it, and take notes later, or even um, send it to a virtual assistant and yeah. say, "Make detailed bullet points yeah. of all this stuff that we just did." Because sometimes these calls can be 20, 30 minutes right. long. You know. Yeah, and and if your calls are being answered by a virtual assistant or even somebody in your office, or like you're outsourcing it to like Pat Live or or something like that. Um, all those, any number that the call is refor- calls are forwarded to can be recorded. So you can record those for, you know, quality purposes. So then you can listen to them and those are coaching opportunities for your sales reps. What's the, what's the legality on recording calls right now? Are you allowed to record it as long as one party is aware? Or is, do you have to disclose so it's, it? it's at a state, it, it depends. Yeah, it's state by state. So states where if only one party needs to be notified, that one party can be you. And so you don't right. have, so you don't have That's to disclose. Yeah, yeah. So, um, we do have the ability though to go in and have a recording play like that's yeah, just, this calls being recorded. Yeah. Yeah. So you can upload your own recording or we have default ones. Um, and that's, you just have to check whatever the regulations are. Um, I'm not sure what it is in Missouri. 
Um, but you can go in there when you when you kind of toggle on call recording. You can just say, hey, I, I want this message to play before. Yeah, and then so I guess I, I bring up the legality of it, but then what also, like, what, what's the consequences to just doing it for your own information? Like, if it's never going to come up in court, you know, like, what, what does it matter if you record it? I mean, obviously you're not supposed to, but you would never really get in trouble for that, would you? Well, if you get in trouble, then there's no problem. <laughs> or if you don't get in trouble, yeah, I, no I don't. Well, I don't know I what the. I can't ever see it being an well, issue. Well, it's only. I think the issue is only notes. if you. It's only in certain states that you have to notify both parties. Usually, it's a unilateral contract, meaning if you know about it, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. But like, I think California and a couple other states, very few, you have to notify both parties. But on, but usually, and I would think you guys are. You guys are very, very compliant with the rules. I yeah. know that. So it's probably a box you can check that says. In the beginning of the call, make a little recording that, or you know, that pops up that just says, "Hey, yeah. this call is being recorded." So that way, both parties are notified. Yeah. If they hear it, great. If they don't, yeah. Even better. By but default, I just, it's assume, done. I just assume everything's being recorded by someone at some. It, point. it basically <laughs> is. Not, at this point not in time, the other party, the yeah. government. I mean, somebody's recording something. At this point in time, one hundred percent. Yeah. So by default, that setting is default. is not turned on. That that, that setting right. is turned right. off. So you have to go in and turn it on. But it, you know, the the burden is on the user to go to go do it to go do it figure correctly. out. Sure. What, the, what right. the laws are. And we do have some stuff built in where, like, if somebody texts you or opts into a web form or calls you past 9 p.m., the system, no matter what won't settings respond. you have, won't respond until the next day, I think, at 8 a.m. Yeah, 8 hmm. to 9. Um, yep. Or, yeah, it might be 8 p.m. to 9 a.m. or something, something like that. What, yeah, whatever yeah. the. So but you're have, right. It doesn't go after hours. Yeah, we have automatic cutoff dates. And you can go in and set your own cutoff times um, if you wanted it to be, like, you know, from 5 p.m. to 10 a.m. Sure, or sure. whatever. But by default, it's going to be, I think, 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. 8 a.m., yep. yep. Just to keep everybody compliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so there's, so websites, phone numbers, CRM. Um, we've also got all your task management built in, so you can do, you know, built in. Um, so know, that's kind of a newer thing. No, we've I, had task management for a long time. So, okay. yeah, so like we one of, we just never it. got around <laughs> yeah. to using it because we were elsewhere. Yeah. But again, as we move over, it's like, oh, damn, we have the ability to do all the things here that we're, I mean, we literally have five or six other places. Yep. So I'm trying to tell, you know, just stress to the, to the listener here, the audience, don't do what we did. Just go get the right product from the get go. Yeah. And I hear a lot of times because it's going to save you, it's going to save you so much time and really just as much money. Yeah, and as well. and I know it at when you're first getting started because I hear it all the time. It's like, well, I'm just getting started, so I really don't need a CRM, and that's really? partially that's you know I, I could understand why you might be saying that, but if you if really a student told me that, I would say, well, well, they're, if they're investing, get one, if they're investing in education, you. you know, if you're yeah, investing in education, and, and like I mean, if you're sitting here listening to this podcast right now, it means that you're, you're investing your in time learning. and you're interested in actually you know building a real estate investing business, um, then you need systems. Like you wouldn't go build a, you know, I say a regular business, right? You wouldn't go start a brick and mortar business and not have a way to keep track of your, you know, your, your customers, right? Or your inventory. Yeah. Or your, anything yeah. The, inventory is a perfect example. It's like, your, well, I only sell one product, so I don't need to keep track of inventory. It's like, right. well, how do you know if you're your, sold out of extra large shirts? Your employee scheduling. Yep. You're not going to put together a, a system. You're just going to say, come in anytime you guys want to work. And then no one ever shows up. Like exactly. it you can't do, you can't operate that yeah. way. I mean, you got to have a system. If you were place. to buy into a franchise, one of the first things they do is they, is they oh, get it, your system set I up. I bought into one. Yeah. They send you a book that's 600 pages long and they'd say, read it. <laughs> and then you're like, okay. Yeah, and I implement just, literally everything. Yeah, in and, it. and then and then they come out. At least the franchise that I bought, and then they come out and they say, "Oh, we're here to offer support." But really, what they're doing is they're just telling you all the things that you're not doing that you should be. Yeah. Instead of working with you to teach you. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Franchises yeah, and like, are. And like whew, we talked about man. too, is you know if you've got systems in place and you're able to catch some of those leads that you might consider, you know, most investors would consider dead which we're just calling cold leads because they're not ready to sell today. You know, let's say your system costs 100 or $200 a month. That's a couple thousand dollars a year. Um, if yeah, the system one, helps you close one extra one deal a deal. year, it might pay for it. If it's a big deal, it might pay for your systems for years. For years. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, it's crazy. Like the math works very well. <laughs> you do one deal at 20 grand. That like, that's like seven, eight, nine years of, of, of software. Yeah. It's crazy. Yep. I love it, man. I love it. So, so you guys basically have an all-in-one system. Mike, what are some of your favorite things that we're using? I know websites, 
landing pages. Yeah, so websites, I would say, would be one of the bigger selling features for me when I first started. Uh, just because uh, having a lead capture website is so much more complicated than I ever thought it would be. Right. Like, it just does, it doesn't make sense how complicated it is. Like, as a non-tech person, I just want a web page that can capture somebody's name and email and send it to me. How do I do that? Send it to me via email even. Yeah, yeah. Good right. luck. Yeah. I mean, just good luck. You can't find anything out there that's simple. So, again, Aria Black Book had that, and it had a bunch of pretty web websites. Made it very simple. So that, to me, was always my favorite thing. Um, and, again, it's probably one of the simplest things that yeah. has been around in the system for mm-hmm. forever. Uh, but that was definitely my favorite. Uh, you I know haven't... what he loves? What? i got to interrupt you. What's that? <laughs> Bandit sign on wheels. Oh, yeah, This yeah. crazy SOB had, like, 100 people on the street. Really? Which isn't maybe that crazy compared to some of the users. No, but, I mean, that should... But that I is mean, a uh, lot of people. At 100... I mean, it's like having 100 Bandit signs sticking around. Yeah, in, what's in, Bandit sign on wheels, for those who don't know? Yeah, so Bandit sign on wheels is basically the concept mm-hmm. of... Um, it's the concept of, of using bandit signs, like traditional bandit signs, but you print them out as vinyl stickers and put them on the back of people's cars. It's brilliant. Um, and so where... Because bandit signs get ripped down. Yeah, so the shelf life of a bandit sign is maybe a weekend, you know? Yeah, three, um, four, five days and, at most. And then, you know, and it takes a lot of time to go set those things out, and you got to do that every week, and so you're doing 50 to 100 a week. Well, what if you could have 50 to 100 bandit signs... That aren't going away. That aren't going and away. And they're moving. ...on the back of people's cars, and they're going all over the place, right? They're, they're you know, they're parked... They're, these are parked cars at, you know, the local grocery store. They're parked on the side of roads. You see them on the highways. I mean, I see them on the highways all the time. All the time. Around St. Louis. Everywhere. Um, but, uh, yeah, so where Aria Black Book comes into play is, you know, the phone number that's going to be on, on one of those stickers has a unique extension. So each car, and, and the reason why somebody would put a sticker on the back of their car is that, you know, when you get a lead from their... They're becoming um, an affiliate. Yeah, they're basically an affiliate or like a bird dog without having to do anything. Right. Um, you know, you buy, a, you buy a, uh, a house from a lead that came from their car, then they get paid whatever, right? They get paid X amount of dollars for that. And then you know it came from their car because of the unique extension that was, it was on their back window. Yep. Yeah. And so, again, that just comes back Mike, to having systems. Mike, you had a ton of them. I did. I had a few of them. You had a ton of are them. Are you still yeah. getting leads from them? Uh, I imagine most of them are not on cars anymore. Yeah. But, yeah, I think one or – there's a few that trickle in here and there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, like those aren't going to stay on the back of cars forever either, but it's, we have well, some users that – If they don't get paid. Yeah. So yeah. that's the thing. And then uh, I'm pretty sure it was about – Maybe one or two years ago, uh, I saw that, I guess it was Ruben and Damon did something, and they were do- talking about, like, engagement with yep. your, your drivers. And that was something I never did, which definitely, I think, yeah, would have so, improved so some the of experience these, for So them. some of these investors will build, will create Facebook groups or just some type of communities. Like, they'll sometimes they'll have meetups, just, like, at a pizza place or whatever, uh, with all their drivers. And just buy and, them all And what they inevitably end up doing is teaching them how to be a bird dog as well. As well. Um, Smart. And so they'll, you know, they'll give them uh, some training on, hey, like, if you're driving around anyways, if you'd like to increase your chance of getting paid, um, you know, if you see houses that are on, you know, that look like this, you know, that are dilapidated and they, they need some work, those are the types of houses we're looking to buy. And so if you refer me those houses – you know, we'll pay you the same split, or maybe we'll even pay you a little bit more, or whatever. But um, so what they would do is they would build Facebook communities, Facebook groups, um, and anytime somebody would get paid, they would film it, and so that's like social proof that hey, this is legit. People are actually getting paid. You might not have gotten paid yet, but you know, if you drive around long enough, hopefully it's you will. It's a matter of time. Yeah, and I know a lot of guys that if they couldn't locate the particular driver, they'd either do a raffle or yeah. they would divide it up. Yep. And everybody in the group gets. 20, 30, 50 bucks, depending on the size of the group. Yep. So, yeah, lots of different strategies to use that. But, yeah, that's that was one of your favorites. It was, man. It was one you of ran bigger, with that hard. Yeah, it was we, cool. I was impressed. We've man. got a few investors that have three to 400, Damn. and that's, like, all they did. They just all went they all in on Bandit Sign on Wheels, and they have systems in place for, you know, making sure that all their drivers get notified and, and stuff. And so they went all in on that. And now they've got, um, you know, 400 cars on the road, and they're getting calls every day. Every day. Know? But that's not something that happens overnight, right? Yeah. I mean, this Josh, is one I of had those like strategies. eight at yeah. one time. And I was like, man, I'm rocking it. Yeah. You know? And then Mike's <laughs> like, I had like 107. I'm like, dude. <laughs> dude. Yep. 
Crazy, something crazy. So yeah, very, very, very cool. Very cool. Well, all that's built though on the RI Black Book software, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, Josh, what's your favorite feature right yeah, now? Or what's it. your coolest? You know. Yeah, the fi- thing the, right the thing that I like most about the platform is the call flow and workflow builders, and so that again is is you know like you could have eight different entry points into your into your business as far as leads. Like you might be driving leads online from pay-per-click and, and Facebook ads. You might be doing four different um, uh, direct mail campaigns. You might be doing radio and you might be doing billboard. And you want to test all of these different campaigns to see, you know, which ones are performing the best, where your best leads are coming from. Because, um, you know, let's say you're spending seven dollars $8,000 a month on marketing and, you know, you're closing X amount of deals a month. I don't know. Call it eight leads a month. Um, you know, it'd be nice to know if your if those leads came from radio or pay-per-click, because obviously pay-per-click costs a lot more than, oh, you know, man, direct mail day, does. Night and day. But if your pay-per-click lead, you know, if five of those deals came from pay-per-click and, you know, none of them came from radio, then you might be like, you know, hey, this radio thing's pretty cool. Like, we just closed eight deals, but you don't know if it was because of radio or pay-per-click. And so the thing I like about the call flows and workflows is so... It's kind of built-in analytics, basically. Yeah, so, KPI is built in. Yeah, so it's built-in lead capture and tracking. And so, like, over, on one side, if a lead's coming in from a phone call, then that's coming in through a call flow. And so the only difference is how the, how the flow is triggered. So a call flow is triggered from a phone call. A workflow is typically triggered if somebody um, calls, or I'm sorry, if somebody goes to your website and opts into a web form, um, or they come in from a keyword text message. So, so you could have like k- keyword cash on a postcard. And so if somebody texts cash, um, then they'll get a text back and say, you know, hey, thanks, you know, use this link to, you know, to get started to get your mm-hmm. cash off, or, or hey, thanks, like what's the address to your house? And so that'll trigger a workflow. Inside of a workflow or a call flow, you can then assign tasks. Uh, tasks, tags, sources, um, text replies, ringless voicemails, email replies. And so let's say you're doing six different offline marketing channels, like, you know, three or four different direct mail, radio, and, you know, even, even pay-per-click. Cause yeah, somebody will click sure. on, somebody will click on your pay-per-click ad and then they'll call the number from your website. Mm-hmm. Right. So you might not, all you time. might not consider that if you don't have a phone number to track that, you might not consider that a lead from a Google ad if you're just using one phone number for all of your marketing. Oh, yeah, you got to have a different thing for everything. Yeah, so, you know, that's why it sounds crazy at first, but, like, that's why investors will have 8, 9, 10, 20 different phone numbers because they've got a bunch of different... Probably got 18 or 20. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, and so now no matter how they come in, they're automatically tagged and sourced, right? And so that's why call flows and workflows are are my favorite uh, feature because it's really... That's really, like, the backbone of all of your processes, you know, and process at the end of the day is really what runs the business, right? Making sure that all of your processes are in order and they're, you know, they're efficiently doing whatever you need them to do. In this case, capturing leads, making sure that they're being sent to the right person on your team and that if the outcome that you don't want to happen, right, if you're not able to get a hold of them, if that doesn't happen, then the next best thing's happening, which is them being followed up with, trying to get them back in the funnel and trying to get them back um, engaged in a conversation. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, so I and I think that uh, and Josh mentioned, you know, the right person on your team and a lot of our people are newer investors listening most likely. That person is often you. Yep. Or your system. So some of those call flows, workflows, a lot of those things can be follow-up emails, follow-up yep. texts like he was talking about. Absolutely. Follow-up ringless voicemails. So you're just going to call you're going to call them, leave them a, a voicemail without actually having to call them. Yeah. So it's really cool. It makes you more powerful as an individual or a solopreneur. Yep. Makes yeah. you more powerful, oh, so, which is like really infinitely cool. Infinitely more possible. And the coolest, yeah, and the coolest part about it is then when you want to remove yourself from that function of the business, from answering all the inbound calls, the system and the process is already in place. You just change where the phone call is being forwarded to, and you change who the task is being assigned to. That's it. And that's it. And now all of a sudden you've removed yourself and you've plugged somebody else in. And if that person doesn't work out for whatever reason or they leave, well, then you just change where that phone call is being routed to, and you change who the task is being sent to, and now you've got a new person plugged in. And so that's the power of having a, a, a system cool. in place. You guys Very want to know cool. my favorite feature? What sure. is it? I've been waiting for you guys to ask. Why <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you talk so much? You know, we figured you already uh, spit it out. No, my favorite feature is probably one of the more simple features. You guys both had two things that are awesome, and I love them both and use both of them. 
But my favorite feature um, is simple. It's the buyer's list. Yeah. Basically, we have um, – I've created a couple different landing pages, and we just pull the form that has the tags that go to the different buyer segments, and I put it in that thing. So in the be- in the beginning, whenever somebody wanted to get on my buyer's list, it was a it was an Excel sheet. Yeah. And I'd have to write, I'd have to type it in manually their name, their phone number, their email address, and then I had a field for notes. But I couldn't I couldn't categorize that any. If I was going to go search for all the people that wanted six three one one three, there was no way to to do that. I had to manually go look through yeah. that. So now what I can do is I can literally if somebody says, hey, I want to get on your buyer's list, and I prefer to not opt people in. I prefer them to do it themselves yeah. because then it just prevents later of you know any argument or yeah. any type of issue, right? So now I literally will text people when they say, hey, I want to get on, I want to get your emails or I got someone forwarded your emails to me. I'll text them or email them discountpropertyinvestor.com forward slash VIP. Yep. And that's it. That's the link. And if you guys want to see what that looks, looks like, go check it out. Discountpropertyinvestor.com forward slash VIP. And it's just a simple landing page that collects the information, and it does it for me. So I don't have to go yep. find spreadsheets or, or, or take down a note and then give it to my VA or even go in and do it. It just autom- it just automates it. Yep. And it's it's one of the simplest things, but, man, whenever I was like really focusing on building my buyer's list, and if you want to be successful at this business and do 8 to 10 deals a month, you got to have a strong buyer's list. you just got to. Yeah, and if you're asking people but it would where save they, time. Yeah, and if you're asking people where they want to buy um, – you can then go run a report and say, hey, where's the most popular places that people on my buyer's list want to buy? And then guess in? where you put your marketing efforts. Yeah, in. and then that's like, a, that's like a shopping list that you just get to go. You know, It's like going to the grocery store with a shopping list, right? It's like, okay, looks like 80% of my buyer's list is interested in buying in these, you know, this part of town or these three zip codes. And like you said, that's where you focus your marketing. Absolutely. One more question for you, Josh. Yeah. You're pretty tech savvy. Is this a forward slash or a backslash right here? That's a percent sign. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I True. love it. Is this a V? Ignore or? that. But would that be forward or backslash? Uh, that is a forward slash. It's a forward slash, God, man. man. It's okay. Well, he's tech savvy. All right. It's all right. okay, man. It's okay. It's okay. Cool. Well, guys, um, again, I really want to thank Josh for coming out. Josh, thank you so much. Um, we are super ecstatic to be able to cut ties with five or six other softwares that we're using you know, we've been using REI Blackbook for years and years and yeah. years, but we haven't been using it to its potential. Um, so it's been it's been awesome to to be able to see you guys grow as a company and add all the things that we have wanted to see since the beginning. And now that we're there, you know, not only are we moving over, but we are recommending everybody that we talk to, all of our students, all of our subscribers, to come check it out. It's an all-in-one place, guys, so you don't need to go out and get – I mean, we literally – Mike, how many softwares do you think we had at our peak? Dude, I don't know. I bet you it was close to 15. You, you sign up for a new software every couple of weeks. I do. It, it is I fun just, to I do, like yeah. to t- test it out and then maybe, maybe, maybe not use it, you know? Yep, but, yep. but No, we, uh, yeah, we probably – yeah, 10, 15 softwares, I'd say. I mean, just for various different things, little things. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, we can definitely, again, eliminate almost all of those by switching back over to REI Blackbook. Uh, Josh and the team over there have a really cool offer for our uh, subscribers. If you go to reiblackbook.com, and that's a... It's not a backslash. It's a forward slash. It's a forward slash. <laughs> forward slash DPI. Yep. You are going to get a... Uh, they're going to waive the sign-up fee. So it's uh, it's almost a $1,000 sign-up fee that they waive. Yeah. Uh, it's it's basically, a license fee, right? Yeah, it's the setup everything for your specific websites and for you. Uh, they waive that fee for you guys, and again, that's huge. So again, it gets you in there for um, really low price. So yep. check it out, uh, Josh. Anything else you want to add? Uh, anything else you need? No, I think yeah, I think it would be cool um, once you guys, you know, once we do get you guys cut over, you know, with, with everything on REI Blackbook, to maybe go back and and we could do a training for all of your members of your free wholesale course. Oh, I love um, that. To kind of awesome. show them, hey, here's what here's what your guys' system looks like now. Right? Here's what you know what happens when somebody calls in. Here's what happens when somebody comes to our website we need to and that's that. a great idea. One hundred percent. You know, maybe we could do we could do that together when um 
when you guys get everything cut over. So, yeah, if you check out reiblackbook.com forward slash DPI, there's a video on there as well that I shot. Yeah, um, you did that, didn't you? That'll, yeah, yeah that'll, that'll awesome. walk you through some yeah. of the uh, – so it's about an hour long, but there's video chapters, so you can skip you through. Can skip through it, if you yeah. want to see some of the, the software in action, if you skip through to like uh, – I think it's like the ten minute mark and on. Um, we get into the actual software, so you can check it out. It's awesome, Josh. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a Thanks pleasure. We're definitely going to have you come back out and do uh, do more of a walkthrough on you know how we're doing it because you're just going to be so much. You're going to add so much value. Would love to, that to yeah. video. Josh, thank you, man. Appreciate Thanks for having it. me, man. Guys, don't forget they are going to waive the license fee. That is crazy. That's a thousand dollars you're going to save. So go check it out, reiblackbook.com, not backslash, forward slash, I'm just giving you (laughs) shit, Mike, DPI. Guys, we are signing off. Josh, thank you again for coming out. Until next time. Thanks, guys. Welcome back to Season 2 of the Discount Property Investor Podcast. Our mission is to share with you what we have learned from our experience and the experience of others to help you make more money investing like a pro. We want to teach you how to create wealth by investing in real estate the Discount Property Investor way. Make sure you never miss an episode and download the Discount Property Investor app in Google Play or iTunes today. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit FreeWholesaleCourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. Thanks for tuning in.